Aloha, and welcome to Talk Story with John Waihe'e. We are so glad to have you all today because I think this is a very, going to be a very special show. And it's special because it is so current with what is happening in our world. And I have with, um, as our special guest this afternoon, Robert Riley, Ambassador Robert Riley, who um, is the Director of Management Operations at the East West Center. And so welcome, Bob. Uh, we're really pleased that you could be here. Um, you know, for the sake of our audience, tell us a little bit about yourself. I, 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 I know that prior to coming to the East West Center that you spent a lot of time in, with the State Department, the Correct. United States State Department. Yeah, tell us a little bit about your career and, and uh, you know, and the rest of it. Absolutely. Um, thank you very much for having me on the show, Governor. It's a pleasure being here. Um, I, uh, I actually spent about 40 years uh, overseas internationally uh, with the U.S. government, uh, starting off in the Peace Corps as a Peace Corps volunteer, then I was Peace Corps staff. And then after that, subsequently, uh, I entered the U.S. Foreign Service with the Department of State and uh, spent 28 years in the Foreign Service in a variety of posts around the world, starting in Africa, went through Europe, through uh, uh, Iraq and Pakistan, and then Southeast Asia, did a quite, a, quite a long time in Southeast Asia. Uh, so uh, kind of been around the world uh, with the Foreign Service. Um, as uh, the governor mentioned, I ended up as the U.S. Ambassador to the Federated States of Micronesia, which is uh, not too far from here in Hawaii. But you spent uh, time in, uh, in terms of our show today, you spent time in Pakistan, right? That is, cor that is know, correct, yes. Got to know what, what America was doing there, essentially. Yeah, I mean, uh, I was working at the U.S. Embassy in, in Islamabad in Pakistan, and uh, we had a number of, of uh, missions there. Um, one chief mission, though, was to support uh, the International Security Assistance Forces, or ISAF, in Afghanistan. So ISAF was the coalition force responsible for training Afghan military and police. And uh, there are a number of reasons why we need to help, help them with that, with that from Pakistan. Uh, it was actually a pretty complex operation. So this is an area of the world which you have some familiarity. That's I mean, right. This yes. is, we, we're not just sitting here discussing something in theory. I mean, you've actually been in that area. You, you, right. You've been, you know, at least dealing with the issues, if not all of the characters involved. Now, why would yeah. the east why is why is the east west center involved with afghanistan well you know the east west center all. is ac actively engaged in assisting well east west center students and scholars come from all over the indo pacific area which includes afghanistan so uh, we do have students and scholars from afghanistan and uh, some of them are currently caught behind the lines in Afghanistan under the Taliban. So when you say caught behind the lines, you mean these are people that find themselves that, that are not popular. <laughs> I don't know how to say it, but that the yes, Taliban they're at risk. doesn't. They're, they're at risk. In fact, I would say they're at high risk because, because the East West Center is affiliated with the US government in some ways. They, they, uh, they get appropriate money from the US government. So the Taliban considers students and scholars who are uh, part of the East-West Center as uh, adversaries because they're affiliated, affiliated with the United States. Well, um, and, and also, I, I just, uh, anything seems like the Taliban seems to be against anything dealing with any kind of Western education or Western thought or... I, yeah, it's uh, the Taliban has a has quite a long list of 
folks they're not terribly keen about, uh, don't really like. Um, obviously, U.S. affiliated is, is a major one, uh, probably Western in general, but in particular, U.S. affiliated. Um, there, there are some uh, ethnic groups in Afghanistan, Hazara in particular, for example, uh, that the, uh, the Taliban suppressed when they were in power before, and we assume they will probably do the same this time, although uh, their lip service says otherwise. They're saying that they won't do that, but uh, the history in Pakistan is that they, they uh, in, with the Taliban, is that they do that with the, uh, with the ethnic groups, the minority ethnic groups in Afghanistan. In fact, in fact uh, since, since uh, we're heading in that direction, Tell us a little bit about what you know about the Taliban. I mean, who are these people that, that, that you know, seem to be jubilantly taking over uh, the country again? You know, and, and as far as I know, they were the bad people that we went over to, among other things, to stop. Well, the Taliban are predominantly Pashtun. And the Pashtun is an ethnic group from the eastern and southern parts of Afghanistan and also northwestern Pakistan. So, and they cover a, a lot of, of Afghanistan, close to a half, I would say, in territory. Uh, and also, uh, you know, probably uh, maybe a fourth of Pakistan. So they, they, uh, they have an, a, a substantial amount of territory in that area. And uh, uh, they, are very, as, as everybody knows, that they tend to be quite militant about uh, Islamic religion and, uh, and are suppressed, have in their, in their previous roles in leadership there, suppressed pretty significantly uh, those who did not go along with Sharia law. So there are others in Afghanistan who are not of that persuasion. They, they, they don't believe that they may be it may be uh, Muslims, but they are not for the strict variety of, uh, of Muslim religion that the Taliban uh, insist on. Um, now there's quite a bit, the Taliban tend to be quite uh, mobile. So there was a lot of uh, cross-border flow uh, between the tribal districts in, pa in Pakistan, which is where most of the Pashtun are located in, in Pakistan and Afghanistan. And that actually was where a lot of the Taliban were protected uh, before they, they just took over recently. So- Well, you uh, know, it's, it's amazing, but uh, in, uh, in addition to being, um, being able to cross the border from Pakistan, I, I heard that, uh, that the Taliban also has have a, a large number of foreign volunteers, people who are just committed to uh, most the most radical forms of the Islamic uh, tradition. And um, so you sort of have a combination of, of both of these types. Of yeah, I would say that there are some fellow travelers, maybe that's perhaps the, the way to put it. The, the Taliban themselves are basically Pashtun, but they do have other radical elements that ride with them. Uh, you know, previously it was the Al-Qaeda. Al uh, the Taliban insist now they do no, no, no longer support Al-Qaeda. Uh, they insist that very strongly. Um, we shall see how that turns out uh, as they uh, consolidate their rule there in, in, in Afghanistan, if, if that continues to be the case. Um, but uh, the, they, are, they, they do attempt to show a more moderate side than they had previously. Um, again, it's hard to say whether this is lip service or if in real, reality, uh, they will be a, mo a more moderate force than they were in their, the, when they were ruling previously. Um, oh, which brings us to, I guess, today. And yes. the crisis. Right. And so we, over the course of a number of years, I, uh, I'm assuming, have been in touch with people and scholars from, uh, from Afghanistan. And uh, how, where and how, how does all of this fit together? 
I mean, what, how do we, do we have any idea of uh, who we, without, you know, naming any individuals, do we know somewhat how many people are from the East West Center might be in Afghanistan, might need our help? And we what know can of, we do about uh, I, I, we don't, I don't want to give any specifics on this, but we do know of some, yes, absolutely. Uh, we have, so you know that you know in fact that there were yes. people there that were in danger and so forth. That, and that's in, really what it. And in fact, we are actively engaged in assisting some of those East-West Center students and scholars caught behind Taliban lines. So we're working with them now uh, and trying to help them in their current situation. Again, I can't give too many specifics on what we're doing. Uh, because the Taliban is scouring the internet for information about uh, people they consider adversaries in Afghanistan. So uh, I do need to be careful about uh, any details, but um, I think that will be that you will see a lot more. Once this is all over, you'll be hearing more about, uh, about what we have been doing with, with some of these students and scholars. He's well, when, when, when you say we, I'm assuming that um, you are, uh, there are other institutions. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not working alone. We have a whole team here at the East West Center that's working this very hard. It's, it's a really tough job. Uh, and, you know, we're, we're working 24-7, basically. Uh, we're in, you know, in, in Afghanistan, Afghanistan Day. Uh, is, is our night. So uh, a lot of the activity is happening late at night. People are up late at night uh, uh, working with these folks. Um, and uh, uh, in addition to that, in addition to our great team here at the East West Center, um, we're co coordinating with a number of US government and non-US government agencies. Uh, there's, uh, there's a lot of people working this issue. Um, well, it's an amazing, a whole amazing network of folks who are actually doing an incredible job with the evacuation, quite honestly. It's in, in terribly, difficult, terribly difficult and complicated, complex uh, situation. Well, um, Bob, Bob well, you know, just for what, what is the situation? I mean, did the United, what is the United States? Are we just like walking away? Uh, I mean, I, 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 what, what is it like? on the ground there, you know, before we get it's, to any. In the yeah, future. well, okay. <laughs> you know, I guess the best way to put it is certainly outside the gates, it's pandemonium. I mean, it's uh, the, the Ka Kabul airport is basically an island surrounded by the Taliban. So it's an island of US forces and coalition forces. Uh, and it's from that island that that evacuation is occurring. Uh, so it's quite, a, it's a very tenuous situation, very difficult so, situation. So this is an island in the center of a, co a country that is controlled essentially, or in the center of a city that's controlled Correct. by the tel Taliban. And, and that's the airport. Now, I, um, do they, are there regular flights going in and out or? Yeah, so we've been watching this uh, over the last week or so, week to 10 days. And it's been quite irregular, especially at the beginning. Uh, at the beginning, uh, there were not many flights, and they had a lo lot of logistical problems. Uh, for example, uh, at the transit points, in particular Qatar, where a lot of these folks are going to, to transfer to other countries, they, go, they are processed in Qatar or one of these other transit points that they've since developed. And I think one, there's one in, in Madrid, there's one in Paris, uh, there are others around. Um, but uh, they were getting overloaded. And uh, so they couldn't bring any more people in. But now, um, they, uh, you've probably heard this in the news, the US government has uh, asked the US commercial air carriers to help relieve that bottleneck of Afghan ref refugees at the transit points. Um, and this, in turn, has allowed more people to be evacuated from Kabul. So the situation in Kabul is better. There are more it's people improving. being taken out by plane. Okay, we got uh, we got a break coming up right now, and uh, we'll be right back. And I want to, you know, start bringing that uh, this conversation more directly into 
uh, what what East West Center is doing. So we'll we'll be right back. Thank you. Aloha. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. Being a lawyer has many aspects, and I try to cover them every time I do a program of Law Across the Sea. Not everything has to do with law or being a lawyer per se. Some of it has to do with the people you meet, the things you see, the places you visit. And that's what I try to combine in Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Thank you for watching. Aloha. Welcome back to Talk Story with John Waihe'e. Aloha again. And we and my, our guest this afternoon, Ambassador Robert Riley, who is the Director of Management Operations in, at the East-West Center. And he is describing for us the East-West Center's involvement in a very large and very current operation, which is to doing its best to get people who are not wanted in Afghanistan back here where they might be safe, or at least back to someplace that's safe. So Bob, we, we were talking about the fact that there is this network of people that are involved in all of this. And you were describing what it was like on the ground in, in Kabul with the sub, at an airport. So why don't you continue with that description? Well, just to, so just to give a little bit more kind of flavor to what's happening on the ground. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you folks have seen the airport, uh, the pictures of the airport, lots of people outside. Uh, it's quite, it, as you've probably heard, it's quite difficult to enter the airport uh, right now, or since the beginning, really. Um, even for those who are non-US citizens, but have visas, uh, and there are a fair number of those, uh, they're having enormous difficulty getting in. Some are, a lot are getting in. I would say probably the majority who go there do get in, but some are not getting in. And it's very, it's a very kind of uh, inconsistent sort of process. Uh, so that's been, that's been a, a difficult to deal with. Um, there are also lots of bottlenecks around Kabul. Bottlenecks getting the airport, you know, as you probably heard, there are checkpoints, uh, Taliban checkpoints are everywhere. Um, you know, there's just one after the other. Uh, the, of course, at the entrance, there's a bottleneck because there are people trying to, a lot of people trying to get in through these gates at the same time. And some of, some of them uh, really are not eligible uh, to be evacuated. We're looking, we're looking at, at people who are at high risk from the Taliban. Because can you give us a broader explanation of yes, sure. what what who's eligible and who's yes, maybe so not? There there are some people who, who have been working directly with the US government. Uh, they are getting special immigrant visas or SIVs. Uh, they are probably the, the highest priority for Americans to be evacuated. Um, so, for the, I mean, I'm assuming the first first priority would be U.S. citizens, right? And, well, of but, course, yes. U.S. citizens, yeah. U.S. citizens, NATO citizens, and green card holders are they're the first priority, uh, right. and that, that's 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 a given. Um, they, in fact, when it comes to U.S. citizens, we have a the U.S. government has a legal obligation to get all those U.S. citizens out. Um, so that's something they have to do, and it is the number one priority. But in terms of the Afghan folks, which, which are the folks we're working with, these right. center folks are all Afghani. Um, uh, the, 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 uh, the at-risk folks are those who are affiliated with, with the United States or United States entities, such as us. 
Uh, then, of course, the non Pashtun ethnic groups are, are at higher risk. Uh, women, especially those who promote human rights, are at high risk. And other human rights defenders of NGOs are at high risk. And finally, journalists are at high risk. Um, so, at any rate, the, uh, the, the gates are open, open and close randomly. You never know when they're going to open, when they're going to close. Yesterday, they were closed for the entire day. Um, and wow. then why was that? That was because they were prioritizing, just as you said, US citizens, NATO citizens, and green card holders. So no Afghanis got in yesterday, or very, very few. Um, now, we think that's going to change today, uh, but we're, we're not really sure. We're, we're working on a couple of cases here. We'll see how that works. Um, but so how do you how do you communicate now? First of all, with the authorities, yeah. you know the the people who are in charge to let them know that uh, I, you know I, I'm assuming that there is some kind of communication with people who are affiliated with the East West Center. But what yes. about just the, the the people in charge of the effort? Yeah, let let me kind of I I can't give you all the details because I don't even know all the details. But um, there really is a whole amazing network of government and non-government folks who are doing an incredible job with this evacuation. Uh, we, are, we initially started with the US government. Uh, we provided, uh, we had to provide letters saying that they would support these folks. Uh, we, but we were also working with, uh, with private entities, some of whom we don't know what, who they're working for, I'll be honest. Um, and they're doing an amazing job. Well, so, so, so the, point, the, the, point, the point being is that this just didn't start like two days ago. I mean, in no. order to have been working with some of these people, you, you, you must have started earlier. We've been just... working since uh, a week ago yesterday. We've been working on this. So it's been, a, it's, it's been, and it's been 24 seven since it started. So, so, uh, so tell us about these amazing organizations. Yeah, I mean, so, well, I can't say a lot cause I don't know much, uh, but we have Nate, we have people that we're going to, who are saying, okay, we're concerned about this particular person. Can you help? And then they find somebody in Afghanistan who is, who then helps uh, someday. I've been assured someday their story will be shared, will be told, and we'll know a lot more about it. But right now, we don't know very much. It's actually so we got we, we you've got an angel network essentially. You right. know, you said, I said you're essentially tapped into an angel network, a network of exactly correct an people who network. you would describe, at least I would describe exactly. as angels. You know. Yes. It, it, well, is, well, it is exactly that. And it's what just, about, they're, they're, they're doing a fantastic job. I mean, it's just amazing. What about um, people that are, um, I mean, you, you've had a great State Department career. I mean, is there any kind of like little network where you call somebody that you worked with and said, hey, uh, Victoria, I, I got, you know, I need some help in Kabul and they call somebody and do they, is there anything like that? Then? I did know a couple of people at the embassy in Kabul, but they have left. The, the actual, the numbers of people left at the embassy when it was evacuated was pretty small. And I didn't know any of those folks. Um, however, since then they brought in other consular offices, officers to help with this huge and humongous effort. Um, but I am not aware uh, that there are any of my acquaintances in that group. I'm not, I'm not, I don't know them. So, Unfortunately, I don't have any contacts there in the embassy. Uh, but you know, the Foreign Service is huge. It's huge. There are some like ten or fifteen thousand people in the Foreign Service. So, um, you know, there it's. It, I do. I, I did know a few people at the Kabul embassy, but uh, they were evacuated early, so I was not able. But to they might them. know somebody, and every who knows who's the angel out there and who might come through. Yes, you know? it's a. It, and again, I, I think a lot in a lot of these cases they don't want to be known right now for a variety of different reasons. And I absolutely. And, I, and so, 
you know, I want to, I'm respecting that they're, they're, they're concerned about that. And I don't want to, I really don't want to talk so much about tell it. Us, uh, I mean, the involvement of the East West Center is because our, I'll, I'll use this phrase, our people are at risk. People Correct. who have been part of the East West Center family right. are there yes. at risk. And, and you've been working on it for about a week now. I, I know that it's difficult to share specific information, but tell us a, if you can, to the extent you can, a little bit about excess about your successes in uh, in the we past have... week, and uh, maybe some of what you hope might happen in the days to come. Okay, I, I yes, I can say that in a very general terms. We've had we have had some successes, and you know, it's it's because of the efforts of many different people, including, including the Angel Network you mentioned. Uh, a lot of people here at the East West Center have been working very hard. We have a whole team here that has been working this issue for more than a week. Uh, and it's been it's been grueling, it really has, but we have had some successes, so it's, it's worth it. We have got much more to do uh, and we don't have much time. So it's gonna be, it's gonna continue to be quite grueling until the very end, I, I can see that now. Um, but that's fun. That's it's it's a it's a it's such a worthwhile cause. Um, and I guess the East West Center friends. is taking the stance of not no one left behind. You know, I mean we're exactly. going to go after yes. everybody. We're doing we everything we can to get the as to part do of our whatever family. we can to every for every single person we know of in Afghanistan. Yes. Well, you know, it's it's amazing because uh, for a lot of people, the East West Center it may be seen as some kind of stodgy research institution, but what you're talking about are, are, is an institution that actually has the ability to help those uh, that are part of its family. Or you know, absolutely. That I mean, the amount of concern. Too that has been expressed by every member of the East West Center. We've got, we're getting a, an incredible amount of support on this. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really tremendous. I think, you know, uh, I, I, I think that the, the East West Center has been uh, just tremendous in its, in its uh, support of these efforts. Um, and uh, I think, honestly, I think the East West Center will be proud of the results when it's all over. Well, that's fantastic. And, and I'm sure that when you say East West Center, we're also talking about that network of alumni uh, yes. that you have out there. That, that, at some that point Angel Network the though, way. the Angel Network has many more clients than us. They're doing dealing with many, many different organizations and they're doing it very well. So well, that they are the stars in, in the end, I think. We're, well, we're, Oh, you know, I want to first of all congratulate you and congratulate your team for the uh, for the work that you're doing, and, and to tell you that it's 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 heartwarming to know that there are people out there who are willing to uh, put it all on the line so that somebody else, uh, a, in this case, a member of our family, can. Uh, have a, a better situation than than where they are. So first of all, thank you very much. And I, for the our listeners out there, um, I hope you get a sense of what uh, first of all the East West Center is is about, and set in a in a special way. Uh, in addition to all of the academic things that it does, it does have a network that from time to time, maybe well used. So congratulations, Bob, thank you very much and good luck. And our prayers are with you and with all the people who are involved. Thank, thank you. you very much. Aloha. Thank you, aloha.